Hi, in this tutorial I just want to talk over the details of how Unity's light probes work. To illustrate this, uh, I've created a simple scene here. It's just a box with a little bit of an extrusion here. Um, this was built in Maya. All the normals are facing inside. This just allows us to be able to see what's happening inside of the space um, easily because of, of the back face calling. Now I want to have real control over my lights in this kind of situation, so I'm going to get rid of some of our other things that might cause us problems. I'm going to delete the directional light that's sitting here, and I'm also going to get rid of all of my kind of stray ambient light as well. So I'll do this in the Lighting Settings tab. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the skybox so we don't see that, and tell it that uh, I'm going to get any environmental lighting from the color and go ahead and set that to black. So what it does is you'll be able to see that what I've got set up is I just created some default materials, blue, brown, gray, green, so on, that I attach to each of these surfaces um, so that we could see what happens. And then finally, um, on the one wall, this I created a light plane, which is just still the standard shader, but it's emissive, and I gave it a, a high, uh, high value color. So uh, maybe we'll just set that to two. All right, now, uh, by default, we're not gonna see a lot happening here. Um, even when I, especially when I turn the lights on, it's gonna appear completely black except for that plane. Um, part of this is that you've got to make sure to see any sort of effects that you mark this as static. Uh, as soon as you do mark that as static, as long as you have the auto, uh, the automatic baking uh, turned on, uh, the auto generate here, then it's going to start to bake in to to make things work out. So you can see that uh, fairly quickly it starts to bake out this scene uh, that looks pretty good. You can see that uh, emissive surface coming off there. Let me go ahead and hide the grid here for a second. Um, so you can see what the output is there. Maybe I'm going to take this bottom gray just so we can see this a little bit better and uh, on the floor. And I'm going to make that a little bit lighter color um, so we can see the color bleed uh, that would be coming off of each of the surfaces. So we've got a little bit of blue, a little bit of green, um, all those kinds of settings as we go. Now uh, let's go ahead and just for illustration's sake, I'm going to take this light plane and let's pump that up to uh, four. Ooh, too high. How about three? Even two and a half. You can see that this uh, works out pretty pretty quickly, uh, but you can see on the floor some of the uh, some of the effects that are that are happening here. Now, um, if we start to come in and add another object, let's say that I add something like a sphere. Um, and this sphere is not static, then suddenly what you're going to see is this isn't used in any sort of baking calculations. And so strangely, it is completely black inside of this space um, that, that this surface is, is baked. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that the baked information here ends up being translated um, to that sphere. To do this, uh, Unity has created something called light probes. The way that we access this is under the assets pull down, I'm sorry, game object pull down menu, light, and we can create just a light probe group. This creates a group that has all the kind of handles that we need. What it does is it creates this series of light probes. Uh, these little spheres right here, what they do is they gather information about the surface around them, and then as any non static object is within there, it actually goes out and talks to the nearest probes to it and that informs the color uh, information that sits there. Now in order for light probes to work out really well you want to make sure and put them in the correct places. So um, the way that this works is you come over and click on the edit light probes um, button here. Once that's selected you can select light probes. Um, let's go inside of them um, here and let's uh, grab these on the bottom. And for instance, in this case, I'm going to slide them over to the wall, those over to the other wall there. So let's uh, pull this up in isometric view. That'll be the easiest way to do this. I'm going to slide these light probes over to there. I'm going to slide these light probes over to there. I'm also going to take some time to slide these kind of up to the corners, although probably I might not need them up to the corner unless my character is going to jump that high. Now notice I'm making sure my light probes are not underneath the set because then they're getting information from the wrong place. I want to make sure they're actually in the set, um, barely close to that. And already you can start to see that, that sphere doing some kind of interesting things uh, that are it's going to be pretty nice. Now uh, let's look at it from the side. Let's further refine how this is uh, set up. So let's look at it isometric. 
I'm going to pull these over to here. I'm going to take these, pull these over to there so that it's set up. Now that's going to start to do uh, what we want. The thing that's a little tricky is that as I'm looking back here on the wall, I have blue and yellow kind of set there. Now if I look at the sphere and I start to move the sphere kind of over to this space here, um, as we're looking at the kind of color ble bleed that it's getting, we're getting a little bit of good color bleed, but not nearly as much as we'd like. And the reason is because it's sampling. You can see the spheres that it's sampling here. And we might not have enough fidelity to allow us to do this. So in this case, I'm going to add some more spheres that are kind of right here next to that big color change so it can give us a little bit more detail on uh, in that area. So I'm going to come into the light sphere probe group where it's at. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell it that I want to edit stuff again. This time I'm going to grab these four over here and click on the duplicate selected. What that does is it duplicates those spheres and they're sitting right on top of the old ones. So I'm going to pull these over here so that they're very close to what's happening there. I'm going to duplicate that again and pull the next batch over to this side as well. Now what it's doing is it's a little hard to see because it's happening so fast, but down here on the bottom you're going to see that every time we create these new set of spheres it's going to be uh, uh, calculating these new probes. So uh, this probably isn't needed in this case, but I'm going to do it just for illustration's sake. I'm going to take these here, I'm going to duplicate those selected, slide those up and over so that they indicate that kind of hot wall a little bit more. Uh, I'll take this one, slide it in here like that, and let's take this one, slide it in here like that. Um, again, I'm going to repeat this on the top. In this case, we would never, uh, we probably don't need this sort of fidelity, but I want to give you kind of the idea of, of what we'd be after here. So I'm going to slide those back here, close to that wall there, uh, and we'll slide this here. The re reason being is that the light wall, of course, if something was really close to the light wall, it'd be getting a much different sort of bounce light than if we were next to the to uh, to the frame. So as we have that set up, then you can see how these are um, all built. Um, when you're looking at the sphere, uh, you can see actually a little bit of information of how that uh, light works out. But what you're going to be able to start to see is you're going to be able to see that blue off of there and the yellow is where we're moving towards that wall. So we're going to be able to see these bleeds uh, much easier. So now as we're moving over to the green, you can see the uh, bleed that's happening there. Um, and even as we get over to here, then you can start to see that, that blown out. So, uh, just to make this a little bit clearer, we're getting a little blown out there. I'm going to go ahead and take the light plane and uh, reduce its uh, value maybe to 1.5, cool that off just a little bit, and perhaps this will be a little bit easier to see what this uh, sphere is doing. So now what we're getting is, uh, you can see the green on that side, as we start to slide over here, we'll be able to start to see the blue that it's uh, bleeding off of there. And over on this side, we just start to see a little bit of purple as we see the green. You can see that the probes actually show the information they're catching um, off of the surfaces around them and then passing that information to any non-static or moving objects as they move around in, um, inside of the space. So really kind of a sophisticated look at how you can use baked lighting um, in situations to make sure to access and manipulate non-static objects. Thanks.